Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you again for the five years of support and watching the channel. I really do appreciate it. I'm glad we've grown to this level and now we are literally gearing up for a third Venom movie, which is something that I think a lot of us weren't sure was going to be possible leading up to the first one. We were all kind of hoping for the best and luckily that movie was a massive success and uh, financially and then went on to lead to a sequel and now a shared Sony universe that might now tie back into Spider-Man at some point. So there's a lot going on over at Sony and whether it's being well executed or not is uh, kind of irrelevant for us because we mainly just talk about the Venom character in the movies and the comics and all that stuff. So if you're new to the channel, you know, please subscribe if you're a Venom fan. And But we'll also talk about some of the other characters that are going to be coming out in the Sony uh, Cinematic Universe, I guess. Uh, we did a little bit of Morbius stuff, but I'm more interested in Kraven and definitely the concept of Madam Web coming up. So you'll see more of that and Spider-Verse stuff in the next season of this show, which will be very soon because we're almost at episode 750. Um, so yeah, that's a lot of episodes to pump out in five years. So I thank you all, the ones who have been here this whole time, those of you who came along the way. And that's one of the things I'm most thankful for this Thanksgiving. So again, appreciate you being here. So without further ado, let's get into what we need to catch up on, which is the current Venom run. Um, issues 11, which I have the digital copy, so you'll see the cover there. But then I also have the physical copy of 12 and 13. And these were held for me at the comic store because I guess these are uh, prequel stuff to Dark Web. And I asked them to hold every Dark Web comic for me that because I'm going to review them and discuss them here on the channel with you guys every time an issue comes out. And so I'll probably like the issue will come out and within a week I'll get the episode up because I don't want to do it on the day because I don't want to talk about spoilers and everything on the day the book comes out. Uh, so I'll try to wait like a week. So uh, whenever Alpha, the Alpha issue comes out of Dark Web, about a week later, you'll see my discussion video go up and we'll talk about full spoilers. So, uh, so I, that way I hopefully encourage you guys to go check out these books for yourself. And that way you're ready for when my video goes up, you've read it yourself, hopefully, and we can discuss more about it in the comment section. So with these issues, um, issue 11 and 12, uh, these are a, a two-part story called Venom World. And these are just written by Rom V. Normally Al Ewing and Rom V are kind of co-writing these together, but this two-part story is just by Rom V. And so I get to finally see what Rom V does with Venom without kind of some of the constraints, I guess, or some of the collaboration that he has with Al Ewing. Although I'm sure still there was some Al Ewing's ideas and concepts that they talked about before that kind of play out in this. And it's just Rom going solo on it because Al Ewing does come back for the Dark Web crossover. So um, so yeah, so the, for this 11 and 12 issues, uh, basically, and again, Brian Hitch is doing the artwork on all these. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and I'm kind of mixed on his art. I'm, I'm not a, the biggest fan of Brian Hitch's artwork, but, uh, but this story, at least this two-part story, is kind of coherent, but it still does play a big factor. Like, this is one of those uh, series that you kind of have to read every issue. There's not really a good jumping on point at any point. I would say 13, maybe, but even in 13, even though they recap a few things, you could still get really lost if you haven't read one through 12. So I would encourage you to just read all of these issues um, and not just jump in randomly at any point. Uh, so if you want to know what's going on leading up to Dark Web, go check out issues one through 13, catch up completely. The first two trade paperbacks are out now, so you can at least get the first 10 in that and then buy 11, 12, and 13 in single issue or digital, however you read your comics. Um, but in issue 11, we're dealing with the fallout of the last issue in issue 10 where the book ended where uh, Eddie Brock uh, stabs his son right through the chest. And so Dylan is now wounded severely um, and is probably going to die. Eddie is now sucked back into the time portal. So he's kind of lost through time again, uh, you know, with this knowledge that I may have just killed my son. And then you have Dylan in the present who has gone into like a, a coma state. Um, and the symbiote is separating from Dylan and uh, and as it's separating from him, it takes a little piece of Dylan with it. Uh, so it actually takes some of Dylan's subconscious and spirit and soul in a way and brings it with it and slinks away, leaving just Dylan's husk of a body behind, which is still alive, but like I said, in a coma state. And so the Life Foundation get a hold of Dylan and they're about to transport him back to their headquarters. And so while that's happening, you have this Venom symbiote slinking around the sewers and it's dying. And it's basically saying like how ironic, you know, like I'm now the host and I've taken Dylan's subconscious or spirit, his mind, I brought it with me into my body. So now he's kind of the symbiote and we're going to die together down in the sewer because Eddie essentially abandoned both of us and we don't know why. 
and while you know he's coming at or the suit's coming at realization and and slowly dying in the sewers sleeper who's being very active on the the surface level who has fought against the the you know the new jury of the life foundation and stuff he is like okay i gotta get dylan back i gotta get him you reunited with the suit so what do i do so he goes to carter the woman who kind of betrayed them uh you know who used to know eddie and he says look this is your chance at redemption and she's like yeah but just the two of us we're not going to be able to do this he goes don't worry i have a plan my name is sleeper right and i have a sleeper agent out there so they actually go to hank who was uh his sleeper agent and kind of host uh, during the event of uh, absolute carnage or whatever that was called not absolute carnage it was uh, extreme carnage and in extreme carnage we got introduced to a friend named hank uh, who's a friend of flash thompson so uh so hank is now hanging out at a bar talking to this girl he's on like a first date and sleeper is like yeah i i didn't mean to pull this trigger so soon but i have a piece of me attached to hank and he is now my sleeper agent so i have to activate him because we're going to need backup for this mission to go rescue Dylan. So I thought that was really cool. It plays into the name Sleeper, and then also to have Hank out there, which was a thread that hadn't been followed up on since uh, Extreme Carnage. Now we get to see that thread pulled, and I'm like, okay, I dig that. So Sleeper has at least one Sleeper agent that we know of, but the fact that he can do that is just a cool ability. It just makes me like Sleeper even more, actually, and it makes me like his name even more. Um, so he activates Hank, and Hank turns into a sleeper with like chemicals all over his back and everything. And that that version of him and this version with Carter, all of them go to try to rescue Dylan. And that's pretty much the, the crux of this issue 11 is them rescuing Dylan and uh, and then sleeper telling, you know, the Life Foundation, like you come after this kid again. Trust me, I'm the most powerful symbiote you've ever fought. I can, you know, change chemicals in the air and in my body and whatever. And he's like, I will. I will find new ways to hurt and kill all of you. And he's like, so you're going to stay away from this boy. So he's doing that, gets in a battle, and then you find out that it's just the copy that's fighting. And the Hank version actually has Dylan already rescued with Carter on a helicopter, and they're out of there before the Life Foundation even realizes what's happening. So I thought that was really cool and really cleverly done. Um, and then while all this is happening, though, in the real world, Dylan is inside the symbiote. His consciousness is inside the mind of the symbiote of the venom symbiote so he's searching around and he finds this character called the keeper and then he also finds other symbiotes that he's battling and the keeper is reveals himself to be a version of eddie a memory of eddie still stuck inside the symbiote and dylan's like why did you leave me why did you leave us you know me and the symbiote like what's going on and the the memory of eddie is like i don't have these answers like i can't answer this because i'm just a memory he goes, but maybe, you know, knowing Eddie, you know, what I am of Eddie and what part of Eddie I am, maybe it's not you I'm trying to save. Maybe it's you that needs to save Eddie. And he's like, but, you know, if you need you need to get up to the center of this, you know, symbiote, like the, the, the mind of the symbiote. So that's where Venom is and you need to get up there. But unfortunately, since I'm the keeper, you have to battle me to get there. And so it's once again, it's another battle scene. And I felt like this one was a little forced. It was just like, oh, we're running out of page count and we need a cliffhanger. That's what this felt like a little bit to me. So I didn't really like that. Uh, but then the next issue, issue 12, picks up and they are battling. So you have uh, Eddie or the, in the symbiote, I guess, fighting Dylan in the subconsciousness of the symbiote. So, yeah, there's just like a lot of it. There's like a dream world and there's, you know, the time stream and there, there's a lot of stuff going on in this book for sure. So it can be hard to keep up with, I, I imagine. But uh, but anyway, so there's the battle. There's the, the center of the symbiote where Dylan has to get to. But in order to do that, he has to essentially kill the memory of his father. So a little sim symbolism there, I guess. Um, but uh, Dylan does. He doesn't want to, but he ends up taking a stab and taking out his father and then, you know, proceeds to go into the next uh, the next phase, which is, you know, he turns into a venom himself with the red symbiote uh, design on him. And that's going to lead to something that happens at the end of the book. But Dylan, now he's like, yeah, yeah, I know Clintar means cage, you know, and in the center, there's a cage. That's where Venom is. So I'm going to now go in there as the new keeper because I, I killed the memory of my father, which now makes me the new keeper of the symbiote. And when I go in there to challenge it, it's going to know that it's being challenged by its keeper, you know. And so, uh, so that's basically, I don't know, so just some lore they're throwing in there. And it's it's all right. It works. It's fine. Um but uh, so Dylan leads the charge, goes in to talk to the symbiote and uh, starts learning more about himself. And the symbiote's like, look, I'm not going to battle you. 
Like, I know who you are. I know what you want here. And I know we have a purpose together at some point. But, uh, you know, I'm dying. Like, in the real world, I'm dying. And they cut to the real world. And the Venom symbiote is still laying there in the sewer. But actually, uh, he gets saved in a way because that's when the sleeper agent um, shows up with Dylan's body and also with Carter. And they walk up in the sewer next to the symbiote and they reunite Dylan with the symbiote as Dylan is inside the consciousness. So it's just like lining up uh, perfectly that way. Um, and Dylan, his body merges with the symbiote as Sleeper is putting them together. And so you see the cat is still back there too. So the cat is Sleeper, like the one we've been following since the issue one. Uh, but this is Hank, you know, so that's cool that Hank's now part of the team and hanging out with them. I can't wait to see what they do with that character because I kind of liked him in Extreme Carnage, even though they did some continuity errors with him, uh, where in one issue he was African-American and one issue he was white. It was it was weird. It was uh, maybe just like a, a bad notes in the coloring or something like that when they were coloring that issue. But yeah, there were some issues with with him and there was issues where he was like being chased and then he wasn't being chased. There were some inconsistencies <laughs> there, uh, but I still liked him overall. I was like, hey, this is a cool character. Um, but once Dylan unites with the symbiote, he becomes his true form, which is Codex. So that's why they set that, that red symbol up. So that's the last we see of Dylan for now. Um, so that's probably going to pick up either during Dark Web or after Dark Web, because this issue 13 is all about um, the prequel to Dark Web. This brings Al Ewing back as the writer, and then once again, Brian Hitch as the artist. And this follows just Eddie, like Eddie in the symbiote going through time. He runs into Wild, one of the other versions of him, and he's screaming at it. He's like, hey, I just killed my son. What is going on? Now I'm in the time stream again. And Wild says, yeah, but you killed your son because deep down you knew he was going to be okay because you already been to the future. So that's why we stabbed him because we, we did it to get him out of that situation, knowing he was going to get rescued. You know, like we know the outcome. And that's why you did it, uh, you know, to, to kind of, I guess, prevent any major bloodshed from happening. So you, you put your son at risk, but you knew he was going to come out the other end okay. I guess that was the, the point. Um, but that enrages Eddie so much that he almost turns into Bedlam and then he controls himself. He's like, no, I'm, I'm not going to turn into Bedlam. Um, so tell me more, Wild. And Wild tells him what he can, but ultimately he's like, yeah, I can't, I don't know everything. I'm, I just know that I don't want to become Tyro. I don't want to be this sniveling, butt kissing thing to Meridius. Like we become so pathetic, you know, um, you know, cause obviously he's an Eddie too wild as a version of Eddie. And he's like, but uh, you know, but this is everything we've tried to do to change things. It has just made it happen, you know, just the way it's supposed to happen. So it seems like, you know, us resisting is what Meridius is counting on. So he kind of lays that little thread there um, before Eddie kind of evaporates and disappears back into the time stream. Um, but then, uh, and cause he's figured out, he's like, oh, maybe I can go and try to do something unexpected. But then, you know, wild reveals, yeah, that's kind of what I was supposed to tell him. And now he's going to go off and do the thing that he's supposed to do. And then now I'm going to go transform into one of the other symbiotes. So my mission here is done. And now I'm at the point where I don't find things funny anymore. And I'm going to become one of the other versions of Eddie now. And uh, that kind of stuff, it's very like, like buttoning up in like a very quick and, way to where I'm like, ah, I don't know. I hope they get through this time stream stuff as fast as possible after Dark Web. I'm really just not interested in it at all. Um, so to have this whole issue be set with just Eddie and the time stream, I'm kind of like, uh, this felt like, I don't know, a little bit like filler, but it definitely sets up Eddie for Dark Web too. So uh, Eddie, when he went through the time stream again, he ends up in a little jar that is has a little sliver of symbiote in it. So he's tiny. He's not really that small. These guys aren't really giants. They're, I guess, regular size, but he manifested himself in the time stream somehow in a little sliver that's kept in this jar. And as he breaks out and asks one of the guys to cast a spell to grow him to full size, he kills one of them, <laughs> definitely, uh, and pops his eyeball out and everything, um, and then grows to full size, gets the other one to, to cast the spell and, um, and bring him to full size. And he says, like, yeah, I killed your friend. He's like, why are you helping me? He's like, ah, he'll come back. You know, everything comes back here. And he's like, what do you mean here? And he's like, oh yeah, you're in limbo. So Eddie is actually in limbo. He's out of the time stream. And he's like, hey, maybe this will give me an advantage and I can do some things that, you know, Meridius didn't anticipate. But of course, I'm sure he's doing exactly what Meridius wants him to do. But when he's in here, in the limbo, 
he comes across an army of goblins and he starts battling them uh, and he's got his wings and everything like that. But as he's battling them, uh, he starts to realize that they are all led by somebody. And he's like, well, you know, bring me to your leader, essentially. Like, what what are you doing? Why are you attacking me? What's what's going on here? And that's when their leader shows up and reveals herself to Eddie. And yes, it is Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen of Limbo. And that is going to set up her going into the Dark Web Alpha book, which will be coming out soon, which we'll definitely talk about. But I guess she is in control of Limbo. Obviously, she has been since Magic kind of forfeited the, the role. And uh, and so she's got all these goblins and demons, and she's ready to lead an army to Earth. And now she has a Venom at her side. So I'm sure she's going to talk Eddie into like, hey, you want to go see your son? You want to, you know, all that? I can bring you back to Earth. But he's going to probably come to Earth completely under her control and have no free will of his own, I'm going to assume. So we'll see how that plays out in Dark Web coming up very, very soon. But for these three issues, you know, let me know your thoughts. I kind of went through, that's what we do on this. We, we don't really review stuff sometimes. Sometimes we just do discussions where I just kind of, you know, go through the book, you know, not, not always beat for beat, but this one, I was like, I don't know, I'm, I'm intrigued, but I go back and forth. Like I like all the Sleeper and Dylan stuff. I've been really enjoying that. The Eddie stuff though, in issue 13, that kind of stuff with him in time, I don't really find that interesting. I just don't, but I know some people do. So if you have a different opinion of me, same opinion, whatever it is, let it be known down below. And as always, we'll keep talking down there like we do. Uh, so that's it for me. Happy Thanksgiving again to all of you. I will have more videos to you very, very soon. Um, I got to go charge my phone now because it looks like it's about to die. So uh, so I do appreciate the support uh, immensely. Um, me and Ace both, we uh, we thank you all for the support this year of everything we've gone through. It's been amazing and, and, and just been so great to still have this channel and to stick with it through even the tough times and to now be, you know, at episode 750 coming up soon. So we will finish episode 750 before the end of the year. We'll get there. We'll have a couple more episodes, maybe one or two more this month, and then the rest next month in December. So we're still going at a slower pace than we normally do. But once we hit January, we'll pick things back up. Hopefully we'll get some more news about the Venom movie, about when they go into production and other movie news, other people being cast. Hopefully we'll start getting that stuff in the springtime and we'll start rolling with season six of the Venom vlog. Can't believe I'm actually saying that, but we're going to be on our road to episode 1000. Uh, so I can't wait. I can't wait to get there. Thank you so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.